My name is Teresa Nazel. I'm an undergraduate student from the University of Connecticut, um, double majoring in chemical engineering and material science and engineering. Before anything, I'd like to uh, make a disclaimer that my personal interest in academia is the synthetic manipulation of polymers, but I'm here to talk to you about a robotics team I formed over a year ago. Um, I formed a team uh, to enter the 2022 NASA Big Idea Challenge. Our project is called Morphing Tank to Lake Modality for Exploratory Lunar Vehicles. After we received funding, we realized what a mouthful that was, and we now call our uh, prototype AMBER, and it stands for Adaptive Morphing and Balanced Exploratory Rover. Next. So a little bit first about our team. There are 22 students who are participating um, in this challenge. 20 of us are undergraduates, and we have two graduate students. The one was an undergraduate when she joined, so she gets a pass. Um, we have two faculty advisors, uh, Dr. Ramesh Mala and Dr. Fiona Leek. Um, our faculty advisors were specifically chosen to um, create still an environment of a more hands-off approach to allow the undergraduate students to have autonomy over this project. Um, within the 22 of us, we span across 11 different majors, three of which aren't even in STEM majors. So we are quite the interdisciplinary team. Um, the final date, we did not begin two months ago. We actually began 14 months ago in September of 2021. Um, next. So our background is, as I mentioned, the 2022 NASA Big Idea Challenge, which is focused around exploring the lunar south pole. Our prompt that year was to develop an alternate modality for lunar rovers. And the conditions that we chose to develop this modality all around were to, to, do, to traverse the unavoidable, fluffy, high, highly porous regolith that is found at the lunar south pole, the steep slopes um, associated with the craters there uh, up to 26 degrees, and um, the potential icy content that is expected to be found at the base of those um, poles. I would like to point out that this is the scope of our project. Our project is based around how this modality moves and not so much the actual um, full rover that it would encompass in its final glory. Next. Our timeline started, uh, as I said, 14 months ago. We spent about four months developing this concept and writing a proposal on it that we submitted in January. In February, we received um, notice of funding. We started phase one, had our mid-project report in May, and are now concluding our phase two. Um, and in a week and a half, we give our final presentation in Pasadena. Next. So, this is uh, this next section is about the progress of our technology. I'd like to remind everyone, I like polymers. This is about a robot. Um, this is why I have a team of 22 people, but I will do it justice. Um, next. So our approach to solving this problem at the Lunar South Pole is to have a morphing modality. We want to combine a tank motion with a quadruped motion. Quadrupeds have not currently been used on the lunar surface. Um, next. But we're looking to combine the robust stability and energy efficiency of a tank with the adaptable stability and obstacle avoidance characteristics associated with a quadruped. Next. So our design with our original proposal was going to be based off of what you see on the left, which is the Open Dynamic Robotic Initiative, ODRI for short. It, is, um, it was a collaboration between, I believe, a German company and New York University. It's a quadruped. Um, everything about this quadruped is open source. You can find the design, uh, CAD designs, an itemized list of electronics, as well as programming online. Our intent was to start with this already at a fairly high TRL um, and build off of it to incorporate the adaptive um, aspects that we were looking to produce. However, after receiving the funding and uh, we're ready to begin purchasing, us, like so many other people, were affected by COVID and a lot of the electronical components were indefinitely out of stock. And by needing to switch out these components, 
um, they, the new things that we were buying had different geometries. Um, so the physical aspect of the robot had to change. Um, and the way it talked to the program also changed. So we could no longer use the shell components or the programming components um, and needed to build our design from the ground up, which you can see on the right. Um, I'm gonna break down, down that design into its um, different components a little bit, but I will go through it rather quickly. Um, but if you have more specific questions about it afterwards, I encourage you to talk to my two team members, Vihan and Ratish, who I brought with me specifically for that reason. Next. This is the body of Amber. Um, this houses um, our O drives and other electrical components separated by these mesh um, barracks that you see that are also used um, for wire control. Next. This is our back driver pole articulator um, composed of an upper shell and a lower shell um, to house more electrical components, including the motors. Um, this piece is articulating and is one of the movable parts. Um, again, everything you are seeing, um, this upper shell, lower shell and joints are all designed um, by these students who have been working on this project. Next. And the final aspect of this design is the tread that is being used for the tank motion. Um, the first image is a CAD design of the mechanism. The second is we are using woven Kevlar to put um, the links securely around each side. This gives it a durable but flexible um, ability to be pulled around uh, the gears that we have in motion. Next. Next. All right, so this is the programming um, outline of what's being used. The red circle is the user and next. The green bot box is um, the physical outputs that you would see within the rover. All of um, the math associated with the motions that are being used in combination with the specific pieces of electronical components that we have chosen um, have been uh, derived by our students as well as then it's um, putting into the program and having that math translated to the programming language and then speaking to the electronical components as needed to create the motions that we desire have also been done fully by our undergraduate students. Um, Rust is the programming language that has been used and all the things in the middle combined are the IMU software, the O drive software, um, the controller software and the dynamics and kinematics software. Next. So the present status of Amber is all of these um, shell components are being 3D printed in house. Um, we have a full leg built that is being used to test um, the programming languages and adapt it as needed. Um, and there's also general assembly of the other four uh, legs as well as the body being done. Um, but the final question, as mentioned at the beginning, is, is this a viable solution to be used at the Lunar South Pole? And next, our conclusion is that more time is needed to develop this technology and test it. Since we did have to start at a much lower um, TRL than we originally expected, the progress has been slower than expected. But with the conclusion of this challenge, as it is um, in the next week and a half, this project does have a permanent presence at UConn. We will be moving to a new lab in the next few weeks. And the current talk is to register Amber as a UConn undergraduate organization. And this will allow its progress to continue to be in the hands of undergraduate students and be used as a learning platform for robotics and for working on um, interdisciplinary projects such as this one. Next. All right, so this is the part that I actually like had control over for the past 14 months and the part that I personally have cared about the most and that is the progress that my 22 students have made. Um, this program didn't just fund a prototype, it funded the personal and professional development of these students. Um, it's been talked about, uh, mentioned or so, uh, a number of times over the last few days that 
more graduates in STEM are needed. And specifically within the context of STEM graduates interested in space exploration. But the stigma, especially with younger undergraduate students, when they hear the word NASA or um, space industry is one, that's super cool. But two, I have nothing to contribute to that. That that is so far out of my league because I am not a genius or a rocket scientist. But as I know, as everyone else knows um, in this room, uh, the space field is incredibly interdisciplinary. Um, you can be almost anything and be able to make valuable contributions towards the progress um, of expanding into space. But many students did not spend their childhoods looking up at the stars, wanting to work in the space industry. They needed to find other routes. Um, my personal uh, involvement started when I had a friend who peer pressured me into applying for my first NASA program five years ago. I never would have done it on my own. So when I formed this team, my goal with advertising it to the uh, UConn student population was to next advertise it and more of the cultural aspects of how I wanted the foundation of this team to be formed. Anyone could join this team. It did not matter your uh, specialty, your level of education. Um, it was a safe space to develop technical skills, to develop personal skills. Um, everyone entered this team with a different reason for joining. Some of them were to develop you know, technical skills. Others wanted to develop more of those soft skills needed to uh, successfully complete a project like this. All of them wanted to do something with NASA. Um, and I wanted to present it in a way that made people feel comfortable entering this arena um, and showing that this is a place where they can make contributions. Next. So some of those non-technical skills that my team has been working on over the last 14 months. Um, the first is outreach, and that began quite early. Um, we have developed relationships with Collins Aerospace Peer Robotics and the Slope Lab at NASA Glenn Research Center. Um, other members of the team have also reached beyond that. We have talked to numerous professors as well as the general community, um, especially the programming uh, students. They have heavily utilized the general population um, in working on the coding aspect. Um, technical writing has been a huge part of what we have also been doing. We wrote a 16-page proposal, a five-page mid-project report, and a 22-page final report. Um, technical writing is a very formulatic skill um, that is generally overlooked in um, the college setting, and this was an excellent time to really focus on it and help the students develop it. And that leads into the final thing, which is communication. Um, we took 22 strangers last year and made them a team. They had to communicate with each other through their various backgrounds, um, through their various knowledge. When building a robot, everything's important. Um, every piece that someone is working on is vital to the success, the overall success of that robot. And they needed to be able to adequately communicate with each other on just how um, they were doing, what type of support they needed from one another. Um, but they also, over the last year, have communicated with the general population about what we have been doing. Um, we are the first team to ever enter from the University of Connecticut and from Connecticut in general. So it generated a lot of excitement um, in being able to articulate what we were doing to the masses has been something that's also been developed. And finally, to our fellow scientists, which we will get to experience again in a week and a half when we present in California. Next. So finally, some of the personal takeaways that um, the team has seen. Um, there are team members who are now doing other NASA projects because of this project. Um, this includes the Space Academy proposal writing course and Floating Dragon. Um, and others have found passions within the many aspects of building this robot. Um, others have found extreme aversion to aspects of building this robot, which is equally as important. Um, 
And finally, we have students who interned with this project and also got internships because of the work that they did on this project. So they're expanding the skills that they have taken and now are transferring them to other aspects that they want to continue to pursue after the conclusion of this challenge. Um, as the organizer um, and leader of this team, this has been my biggest pride over the past 14 months, seeing the development of the student, of the students, um, or lack of development sometimes, but they always come around. Um, next. So I'd like to thank those who supported us monetarily, which is NASA, the Connecticut Space Grant Consortium, and UConn, as well as advisory support from Glenn, Collins Aerospace, Peer Robotics, our two faculty advisors, um, and other support needed. Next. Thank you so much.